We have one clownfish here that lives in our shark exhibit at the Vancouver Aquarium. It's a maroon clownfish and it definitely comes out to charge and challenge scuba divers when they enter the habitat if they get too close. I have been repeatedly pegged in the mask, bitten on the face. I'm a lot bigger than a clownfish, so it's not too bad, but it's very startling, especially if it catches you off guard. Clownfish are scarier <laughs> than our sharks. <laughs> Clownfish are a marine, bony, fin-rayed fish that live in sea anemones. You might recognize them from Finding Nemo. There is a symbiotic, mutualistic relationship between clownfish and their host anemones. Clownfish benefit by gaining a safe haven that gives them a habitat and a home to live in. The anemone actually gains protection from the clownfish. Clownfish are very territorial, so they will protect their host anemone from parasites, from predators, and all the swimming between the tentacles helps to keep it aerated. Clownfish do live in communities, and they do have a very strict social structure. There's one dominant female and a dominant male, and they will be the only ones that will reproduce. If she's no longer within that group, that's when you'll see the males kind of vying for that next top position, and that's when you'll see males transition over to being the dominant female. Once a male has transitioned to a female, there won't be any opportunity or capability for it to switch back to a male. It's reached the pinnacle, basically, as it's transitioned to a female as being the most dominant fish that is now able to reproduce. I really like clownfish. I think they are a very charismatic animal. I love that Finding Nemo has put a great spotlight on clownfish and coral reefs. But I gotta tell ya, my fish that I fear the most here when I'm diving, it's gotta be that maroon clownfish. <laughs>